Hey everyone, today we're talking about patchwork from designer Juve Rosenberg, best known for his work on Agricola, Caverna, or at the gates of Loyang to name just a few. So big heavy German games and big heavy German boxes. Well, patchwork is none of that. It is for two players only. It comes in the smaller box, obviously, but it still offers a surprisingly good amount of strategy. Let me show you how it's played. In patchwork, both players are sewing their own beautiful quilt using, well, patchwork. They will each try to put together the largest quilt possible while managing time and buttons. Buttons can be exchanged to acquire new pieces of cloth, but they also represent points at the end of the game and will thus help determine who's the winner. Let's first look at how to set up the game, then I'll tell you how it works. All the different patches are randomly placed around the central time board that will keep track of time. The neutral token is placed right after the smallest patch in clockwise order. It will indicate the next three patches that are available. Five special patches are placed on the time board. Then each player will put his time token on the first step of the time track. Finally, each player will receive one quilt board and five buttons. The game can now begin. During the game, it's always the last player on the time track that will keep playing. This could lead to a situation where the same player will keep playing until he catches up with his opponent. When the two tokens are one on top of the other, which is always the case at the beginning of the game, it's always the top token's turn. Here, green will open the game. During his turn, a player has two choices. He can either receive new buttons or spend some to get a new patch that will have to go on his quilt board. Let's see how to get a new patch. Like I said, the neutral pawn will always tell you which are the next patches available. Here, the green player can buy one of these three patches. The label on the cloth will let you know how many buttons you'll need to pay for this piece, but also the number of time units you'll need to sew it to your quilt. For instance, this piece will require three buttons and will move you forward two spaces on the time track. If the green player wants to buy it, he will need to pay three buttons to the bank, only then will he be able to sew it to his quilt, according he can find a place for it. After that, he'll move the neutral token to the place the patch he just bought used to be. It will indicate the next three patches available. Finally, the player has to advance his time token on the time track according to the number shown on the label. Here it is two spaces. His turn is now over, the player will have to look at who's behind on the time track and that player will have to play. If a player doesn't want to buy or doesn't have enough buttons to pay for a patch, he can always decide to receive new buttons. He will then move forward on the time track until he reaches the space right in front of his opponent and get one button per space he just moved. For instance, it's now Yellow's turn to play. Yellow decides he wants more buttons and move forward three spaces on the time track to get in front of Green. He gets three buttons and that's the end of his turn. Of course, Green, who's now last on the time track, will get to play next. So on his turn, a player has to decide if he wants to spend some buttons to get a new patch or to receive new buttons. But even with that, the amount of buttons is not enough to get until the end of the game. That's where the buttons that you've probably already seen and that are directly sewn onto the patches come into play. Whenever a player crosses one of the buttons on the time track, he will receive an amount of buttons equal to the number of buttons already sewn onto his quilt. For instance, let's say a player has sewn this quilt. Every time he will pass one of the buttons on the time track, he will receive 8 buttons from the bank. Of course, this income will grow during the game according to the patches the player will buy and sew onto his quilt. Five small leather patches are also placed on the time track. These will be very helpful to fill little holes on your quilt, but you'll have to be fast to grab them. It's first come, first serve. In patchwork, the first player to put together a 7x7 quilt without any holes will get a bonus tile worth 7 extra points at the end of the game. And speaking of that, the end of the game comes when both players reach the end of the time track. Now is the time to tally up the score. The players count how many buttons they still have in their possession. Every one of them is worth 1 point. But they will lose 2 points per empty space on their quilt board. So I guess you understand how important it is to select the right patch when you're buying one so that you can fill out all the little gaps and end up with a quilt without any holes. The player with the most points win the game. And here you go, now you know how to play patchwork, so have fun and I'll see you in another episode with another board game. Take care.